welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the Europa League. And it is right here, the quarterfinal stage, where Barca will travel to Germany to take on Eintracht Frankfurt in this first leg encounter. There is a lot to discuss. We're going to be going through all the team news, the possible lineups on both sides, and exactly what we can expect from this match, which is another challenge, another test. The Chavis team will aim to overcome. So without further ado, let's get to it. Because indeed, live on Thursday evening in Frankfurt, Eintracht will welcome Barca for the first time ever in competitive history. We have never taken on Eintracht Frankfurt before in a competitive fixture. And for that reason, the city of Frankfurt it is going to be bouncing. We should expect here the same sort of atmosphere that we saw away at Galatasaray. There's going to be 50,000 fans inside the stadium all waiting for this contest. And this is what we're seeing in the Europa League. This is what we're seeing when we're coming up against different kinds of opponents because this is a massive occasion for them. This is a huge night in the history of Eintracht Frankfurt. It's a cup final for them, welcoming Barca onto their own turf. We've got to be ready for that. We've got to handle the expectation of being big favourites and manage the pressure. Because after all, Eintracht are certainly confident in pulling off an upset. Because after they made it past Real Betis in the previous round, they scored in the final seconds of extra time, courtesy of an own goal from Real Betis. Their coach, Oliver Glasner, he said, I'll casually and provocatively say, if you can progress against the fifth best team in the Spanish league, then you can do the same against the team who are third. Barca at the time were in third place in La Liga. Since then, we've risen to second and we're in good form. But when it comes to our hosts, Eintracht Frankfurt, many of you may be coming into this game not knowing exactly what to expect, not knowing what sort of team Eintracht are. Well, right now, they are ninth in the Bundesliga. This season, they've won 10 games, drawn 9, lost 9, 39 goals for, 38 goals against, with 39 points. And I think that sums up their season perfectly. I wouldn't say that it's been a particularly great one, but it hasn't been too bad either. They're somewhere in between this season and has been a bit of a drop-off last season. They finished fifth in the Bundesliga. They were brilliant last season, but they did lose 28 league goals in the summer when Andre Silva moved to RB Leipzig. Eintracht will set up here with a three at the back system, and this is going to be particularly interesting to see how they line up. Will it be a 3-5-2 setup? Will it be a 3-4-3? And I have to single out one particular player in their team, and that is is Philip Kostic. He, for me, is the danger man, the talisman in this Eintracht side. We may see him play a little bit more advanced depending on how Eintracht set up. But what he's going to do is get a lot of crosses into the box. He is a really fantastic deliverer of the ball into the area. We will have to shut down that side. And that's particularly interesting when we're going to move on later to what Barca are going to do at right back. I would also keep an eye there on Kevin Trapp, the goalkeeper. We know him very, very well. He's a very good Good shot stopper. They've got centre backs there who can go forward and score from set pieces. Kamada can be a dangerous player, as Real Betis found out. And Rafael Santos Borre is Eintracht's top scorer, but only with seven goals. When it comes though to Barca and our team selection, one thing that we will have to note before this game is that Memphis Depay will not be involved in any capacity. Barca announced this morning that Memphis has picked up a left hamstring strain which reportedly could keep him on the sidelines there for around two weeks. So he won't be involved today and it's another injury problem which just seemed to have plagued Memphis over these past few months. He hasn't really been able to gather any momentum in Chavez his team, as you can see here, from the Barca squad for this game. There's still no Luke de Jong. He's still out with COVID. Braithwaite, though, returns, as does Alejandro Balde. But it is still too soon, as we discussed yesterday, for Ansu Fati to be back. Serginho Dest is still on the sidelines, but hopefully not for too much longer. But that is still a wonderful squad and an exciting squad of players 
for Chavi to choose from. However, also going into this first leg encounter, we do have to bear in mind that several Barca players are at risk of suspension. Gerard Piquet, Eric Garcia, Jordi Alba, Busquets and Gavi are all at risk if they receive a yellow card in this game. If they do, they would then be out and miss the second leg. So that is also something we have to be careful of back at the camp now. And I think one player who coming into this clash is going to be really up for this and he's going to be excited to get on the score sheet once again, it is of course going to be Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, because as you can see right here, he is chasing history in the Europa League. He is just two goals away from matching the tally of Aritz Adaris, the former athletic club striker, and Aubameyang is just six goals away from Falcao as the highest goal scorer ever in this competition. And if Barca make it all the way to the final, Aubameyang has the potential here of five more games to get that record. And when it does come to the starting lineup of Xavi Hernandez in this game, I think it is going to be very, very interesting to see what he does. Because obviously, over the past games, over the past months, Barca have been in irresistible form. So the question is now coming into this game, how much do you change that? How many changes, again, if any, do you make to your team? Because you have to get the balance right here from, of course, consistency, playing the same players, the proven quality, but also maybe he here, we might see just a little bit of rotation in some areas. So of course, Ter Stegen is going to be the man between the sticks. At left back, it is going to be Jordi Alba for sure. But then at centre back, again, it's going to be interesting because I would actually say here, is it going to be PK and Garcia at centre back? Because at right back, we have a bit of a problem. There is no Danny Alves, of course. He is not registered in this competition. And of course, as we said, there is no Serginho Dest through injury. So I just wonder here, are we going to see again Araujo out in that right back area? Just like we did against Real Madrid when he shut down Vinicius. And that's what I mean about Philip Kostic. Arguably Eintracht's most dangerous player. Do you put Araujo out there? to stop that cross, to stop the threat at source. And I think, again, we could see Araujo doing really good work in that area in this game. In midfield, I think Busquets is likely to start here in the away leg. Maybe if we did take a lead back to the camp now, but I think he would get a rest in the second leg. But I do think here he will stay in the lineup. But... Potentially, I think we might see Frankie de Jong on the sidelines. I think Xavi, throughout the season, we've seen him give rest to de Jong to rotate him out here and there. And I think this might be a game where de Jong does get a bit of rest in his place. Will we see Gavi and Pedri together in midfield? That would be very, very exciting indeed. Our two gems together in the centre. And then up front, again, a very interesting and tough decision that Chaffee has to make. Because, of course, Dembele, Aubameyang, Ferran, they've worked perfectly together over the past few games. But... I feel like we might see the return of Adama Traore. He hasn't featured that much recently, which seems a bit harsh given that he didn't do anything wrong, really. And apparently he's still training really, really well. So I think Adama will come in. But who for? Is it going to be Dembele out? Do you give Dembele there a bit of rest? You don't want to overexert him. You don't want to force any problems for Dembele. Or... Do you go with two lightning wingers? Do you have Dembele on the one side, keep him in and replace Ferran with Adama Traore, with Aubameyang leading the line? Those are the decisions that Xavi will have to make. But boy, isn't it a nice problem? that we have. And when we do indeed move on to your predictions for this particular encounter, I've got to say, guys, fair play. Because I don't think we as Barca fans right now are getting too ahead of ourselves. Because maybe you would have expected there to see Barca fans thinking, OK, three plus goals, we're going to easily beat Eintracht, all of this. But I think we all realise it's not going to be easy. Just like we saw against Galatasaray in the previous round, these are teams that can make it tough for you, that you are going to have to work hard to beat. And you can see here some members' predictions. There's two near. 3-1, only a two-goal margin in it. But of course there is the potential that if Barca turn on the style, turn on the quality, we could leave with another big scoreline. I am going to play it safe. I'm going to play it cool and not go too overboard here. I'm going to say Barca 2 I'm track nil. I think that would be a really, really nice scoreline to take back to the camp now to put ourselves in the driving seat in this game. And also, don't forget, guys, as we're looking at the quarterfinal stage of the Europa League, the winner of Barca versus Eintracht will face the winner then of Lyon against West Ham. So keep an eye on that fixture 
over the next seven days. Please let me know all of your predictions and exactly what you are expecting from this clash. Are you confident? Is this going to be another important win? Let me know down below. I will see you tomorrow for all of the reaction. Thank you for getting involved and thank you for your support. But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Pasa. Oh, <laughs>